scouts out. And we're going to package this guy up and send it off to get flashed. All right, so we're going from this to this. These are the final ones. They look pretty good, man. I yeah. installed it on the bike. It looks, looks seamless. Good. I'm excited to finally bring this to the market and close up this project for good, you know? Hey, guys, we have another ECU. Oh, hello. Oh, look at that. Got another Scouts ECU out. in, and it's from our buddy Scouts Out. Oddly enough, for his ZX4R. So, uh, you want to take go, care of this? Yeah, let's go flash it. Got some Scouts Out stickers. Here you go, Mark. Have one. Look at this. Somebody went all out on the packaging. Yeah. Alright, man. This ECU is flashed and ready to go. Can you make sure you pack it with some extra love? I got you. Awesome. Thank you, man. Ladies and welcome back. We finally have from TSC Industries our unrestricted tune. And what else is really kind of cool is this is just an unrestriction for now. There is a whole nother stage we could do to this ECU, which is right now we only have a slip on, so we don't really need to tune. I think we'll be perfectly fine with just a slip on and unrestricting it, which will allow us to ultimately ride this bike the way it was designed to be rode, get all of our power back at the high rev ranges. And then later on, I'm gonna throw a full exhaust system on here. We're gonna do something for an air intake. We're gonna send it back to TSC that will give us a little more power. The first thing to do here, guys, is we are going to go ahead and reinstall our ECU, which is pretty simple. Put it in, we'll snap it back in place. Then we have these two pieces that are kind of like the ECU in the R7, which was interesting, that just use this plastic shell to hold the ECU in place. So that's pretty much it. At this point, we'll go ahead and take those two little rods in the fuel tank. Oh yeah, that slid on there, super easy. Something else that I have found very annoying that has happened multiple times is these little rubber pieces in here on the fuel tank, they just kind of pop out of place, which is really annoying. Definitely recommend that you look at these and make sure they are in the right spot. So I'm gonna pull this out so you can see how it's supposed to be in there. And I'm gonna try and weasel it back in place. And now this is, of course, off on both sides of my fuel tank. In fact, the last time I took the left side off, this exact same thing happened on the left side. So it is definitely somewhat annoying to just kind of peel all this back in here. No doubt, very annoying, but that is what this goes into. So I'm gonna do it on the other side too because I have the same issue that's done. I just didn't want to forget that. And if you remember there, we have this little piece covering our fuel line, which was great. Kept our fuel from kind of leaking out. And all we have to do for this guy is put this, slide this line back on like that. You can feel it went all the way and seated. Can't go any farther. And then I'm just gonna push this red pin down and we are back on. So our fuel line is reconnected and we still have our fuel connector that we have to plug in, but what we're gonna do with it is route it down here, just kind of on the side here so we don't mess it up putting the fuel tank back down. I'll get my hammer out of the way here and we'll set this tank down. And here is our fuel pump power. So we're gonna plug that guy back in. And at this point, what I'm gonna do is go ahead and plug our negative back in so we'll go ahead and take our ground wire here, reroute it back where it goes. And for me, because I'm running this heated jacket slash charger, I need to put this guy back on. There we go. Now I have my power back on. We'll go ahead and make sure everything is working as intended. We should have that check engine light at first. All right, we got our power back on. Next thing to do is to line up these bolts. There are three things you technically need to line up here. First one in there quite well with just a little bit of wiggling. I put it in, just kind of wiggle everything around a little bit until you can feel that you're getting a few threads. Like I am getting threads on that now. You can tell it's binding slightly, but it is not cross-threading. The last two should be fairly easy. Yep, this one's going in real easy. This one's going in real easy. They are five millimeter. They definitely don't have to be over torqued. There's one, there's two, three, and last one, all right. Don't have to kill those. They're not gonna come out of there. All right, if you remember over on this side, we had this one, which is the closest. So you'll want to try and pinch these without rolling them too hard and get them to go over the lip. You see there's a little lip in this uh, fuel line for the tank. You wanna get that this metal clip over these lips. There we go, there's one of them. Here's the other one. There we go, that one's on. So back up at the front, we want to kind of reline some of these plastics back up. You can see where they're going to go. We're going to come back to the rear now that they're lined up so that we don't have to pop them out of place. And you can see we have two of these rubber grommets. 
So we got to kind of work the top piece of the fairing, lifting it up, getting that one in, and then this one right here. Now we have this whole side panel back on and doing the same on this side. We're going to make sure this is lined up. Go ahead and go in at the bottom there, the first rubber, the second rubber, and then down here for the third rubber. So now we can start putting the bolts in the top and you can see how you got to kind of move these around just ever so slightly to make sure that everything lines up. So we have some four millimeters here that we need to put back in. Just make sure everything lines up before you start uh, screwing it in. And of course, make sure you have that little plastic washer and don't over tighten these things. There's absolutely no point. That little washer is going to help us keep everything together. And this one down here, which was the long black one. And in fact, you can actually feel where the bolts going in and you can actually kind of move it a little bit down there, which kind of helps you line it up a little bit better. So there's the top three installed. And remember we have this one down here that's got to go back in. That is one of the shorter black four millimeter hex screws. So that's one side. I'll quickly do the other side. It's the same thing. All right, last things to do here, put our seat back on and it's time for our first startup. Now you can see we got a lot of stuff flashing on us here. Don't worry, it will go away. It's kind of like unplugging the battery in your car and needing to get a smog done. It won't pass smog at first. It actually has to go through multiple cycles before all the parameters clear so that you can actually get it smogged. Kind of the same thing for this motorcycle. It's gonna take us a couple rides. Finally back on this thing. It's been several weeks, guys. Uh, yeah, it kind of sucks. We don't really get to do like a first impressions of how the ECU is going to go. And that's obviously because we need to cycle this motorcycle multiple times before it is going to relearn and be ready to ride. So supposedly, thanks to Motos with Dak, I'll put his uh, channel down here. Uh, he already went through the pain of figuring out that you have to basically cycle the motorcycle a few times, which is cool. <laughs> All right, guys. Uh, yeah, she definitely feels better. As you can tell we definitely have a lot more power on the top end, and you know she's not done. But you can feel we are pulling now versus just <laughs> slowly picking up. So that's freaking cool. <laughs> I can't wait to give you guys the real impressions of this thing. Stay tuned. I hope you guys enjoyed the installation. I will go ahead and cycle this thing a few more times and give you guys my real impressions of the unrestricted tune. Thanks for hanging out with me guys, and we'll see you next week. Bye. I've rode this thing three times now, and we are already good to go, which is pretty rad. So no more check engine light once you start up the bike. KQS I had to turn back on, but other than that, three rides and it was good to go.